If you want to know how to use Ecamm Live and Stream Deck to produce live videos on the fly with no need for post-production, then this video is for you. Hello and welcome to Take One Tech. My name is Alec and today I'm going to be talking about Ecamm Live again <laughs> and also how I combine this with Stream Deck to produce these videos. So one of the sort of prerequisites of uh, actually beginning this channel was that I had to get all of the editing side of things out of the way because it's frankly not something I enjoy and also I tend to make it difficult for myself if I know that I am going to be able to edit then what I'll tend to do is retake things and so the whole point about this is that I'm able to sit down and record a video from start to finish with uh, next to no editing occasionally if my little two-year-old runs in or something I might cut that out <laughs> but in general it's a sort of start to finish including all of the titles any animations any music coming in and out uh, any graphics and things like that and for that I'm using the software Ecamm Live so I thought what I'd do today is just run you through uh, the process really of how I make one of these videos so that you can uh, see for yourself how uh, well frankly how easy it is <laughs> and then hopefully it'll also give you a bit of an understanding if I uh, seem to be fumbling over my words sometimes bear in mind that the whole intention is for me not to edit so I could probably go and edit those out and also let me know if you think it's actually a little bit disrespectful not to edit them out uh, if you think the mistakes should be uh, taken out to make it as polished as possible and well removing those last errs that I said as well <laughs> I'll pretend that those were intentional to prove a point but Okay, so what I'll do now is I'll show you uh, my screen and you'll see the interface that I have with me. So here we go. This is what I'm seeing now and I've basically got a view uh, of the, uh, the output here and then I've got a couple of panels down the side and at the bottom. There is some other functionality in Ecamm Live but I won't go through that all today. This is more really just sort of my process and what I'm using at the moment to produce the videos specifically on this channel really. Uh, so I've got a number of different scenes down the uh, left hand side here and then I've got some overlays and I'll obviously discuss what all of these are Then I've got some uh, camera settings here uh, some sound effects and something to just monitor my levels so that I don't uh, do the whole thing and realize I was on mute like I did the other day so anyway <laughs> getting back to it I've got a series of scenes here down the left hand side as I said they're the scenes that I use so for example uh, the um, one I'm on at the moment is actually a main one if I click back to titles though uh, what you'll see there is it will run through that title sequence again and this title sequence was done in Keynote so I'll make another video all about how exactly I did that and have all these animations timed and so on uh, I've used Keynote I could have used something uh, slightly more advanced than that probably except that I didn't really have the skill set <laughs> I could have learned it but I just didn't have the time because the whole point about this channel for me is it needs to be a sort of minimum viable product so just getting something out there and starting to get into the routine of it because a sort of ulterior motive of all of this is that it is actually practice for me to create some content for another course that I'm creating which is sort of unrelated to tech really um, but I'm not going to use this channel as a place to pitch all of that so it's kind of like a work in progress I guess so anyway I'll uh, I use Keynote for the titles then because that's what I had to hand and it's what I knew uh, sort of inside and out so I'll do some videos and when I do I'll post a little link up into the which corner that corner <laughs> and uh, yeah show you how exactly I've done all of these animations uh, you can see obviously there is a bit of a sort of branding going on here that they all look quite consistent so I also have another one for um, when I'm doing a live stream so this looks like this and yeah so I've got a countdown timer which is done in Ecamm Live itself uh, but then the rest of the background uh, and this little sort of animating thing here is done uh, just as part of the animation in uh, uh, Keynote so then as well as the title sequence and whoops didn't need to trigger that one again <laughs> the main scene then we've also got another one which is just basically the main scene slightly zoomed so that it's uh, 
breaks up some of the monotony perhaps of a static image it's good to have a little bit of movement in there sometimes and then I've got the obligatory uh, don't forget to like and subscribe so yes if you do find this video useful and you would like to see more then go ahead click the like button leave any comments ask any questions and then yes turn on those notifications so they get notified of any other videos I will be doing a lot more videos specifically on Ecamm as well because there's quite a lot to cover and it's something that I'm using quite extensively at the moment so I just want to share the sort of things that I'm doing uh, which may be not exactly the standard way of uh, do <laughs> of doing things but I found a few little ways around some issues that I was having so yeah there will be a uh, link up into the top corner again to the whole series of Ecamm videos that I do uh, there's only a few in there at the moment but I'm going to be building that out over the next few days and weeks and so on so the next one that I have is a screen share and here we go that one is now sharing this is actually my secondary monitor um, if you don't have a secondary monitor but you want to do a screen sharing like this uh, so that you still get to see all of your own screen with all of the controls on but you want to see this I've got a sneaky little trick for how you can do that and I'll drop a link to that video up in the top corner as well and this panel here sort of gives the game away about the other half of this uh, this video really which is all about Stream Deck now if you haven't heard of Stream Deck what I'll do is I'll switch now down to the top-down camera and you can see it here on my desk so let me just come out of demo mode a moment and I'll go full screen and what you can see is although I would previously been sort of clicking around on the mouse to click between scenes I've actually got all of those scenes uh, pre-programmed into my Stream Deck and the Stream Deck is basically a small uh, little unit, but very sturdy and well, well built. It can either sit totally flat on the desk if you take this part off, so it's just quite slim. It can sit next to your keyboard, and the keys are about a bit bigger than actually than uh, standard keys on a normal keyboard. Uh, but then it's also got this bit if you want it sort of angled more up. It's uh, got a bit of a higher angle on it but yeah so the keys are as I say slightly bigger than a standard keyboard key uh, but the thing that's different about them is they are all actually individual screens and if I just flick back to my uh, uh, screen share what you'll notice is that these symbols on these keys down here uh, actually match the symbols that are on the stream deck and if I just go back up one menu by pressing that in the corner then you can see that you can actually just drag uh, different symbols, different uh, commands onto the Stream Deck and then you can program them. So everything that you saw on that previous screen, if I just go back to it, all of these commands are things that I've, uh, I've programmed in and it's very easy to do. I say programmed in like I'm um, some sort of <laughs> computer coding uh, master but actually in this case it is very simple to create these uh, these keys uh, and then what I've done is I have actually created my own sort of icon set with different uh, different icons so you can see for example I'm in the top down view now at the moment or rather the uh, the sharing screen view and you can see here that there is a, an icon and there is also two different uh, versions of the icon so as it's toggling between the different scenes I'm just linked into Ecamm Live and I've got a list of all my different scenes I've just selected the scene from there and so when I, that scene is active then it uh, changes color so if I change back to the top down one you should see on my stream deck that this one then becomes the active uh, key so there you go it's just changed from this one to this one and if I change it back again you'll see them just changing there in the uh, uh, the preview so this is the interface where we build out everything and as I say I've got my different uh, scenes here and you can have them as single actions so for example in uh, Stream Deck there is a whole load of uh, actions that are built in so if I just go to a little blank screen to show you here in the Screen Deck, uh, Stream Deck uh, options I beg your pardon in the Ecamm Live options might help uh, what you can do is you can select whether you want to run a scene, go to the next scene, play a video, uh, show or hide an overlay, play a sound, all of these sorts of things that you can do in Ecamm Live. They've uh, very kindly made a uh, set of commands from Ecamm Live for the Stream Deck. So that is how you just simply, if I want to add a, a new scene for example, it's as simple as adding a little button and then saying which scene you want it to run so maybe we want this one to go back to the uh, the main scene for example 
uh, it puts a little title on and then if I had got an icon ready I could just drag that over and drop it on top and then if I just switch back to the top down view again uh, so now we are viewing that setup that you just saw on the screen and if I press this button now it'll just go back to the main screen so it really is as simple as that it's sort of drag and drop and select the uh, the particular scenes and things like that that you want to use now another thing that you can do with it is if I just quickly go back to where I was my full set of icons and I'll share the screen again there we go you can also as well as changing scenes you can have it uh, activate overlays now overlays are things that uh, well as you might gather overlay over the top of the picture so I've got one here for uh, for example my uh, lower third so that's this button just here and if I press that then it puts my professional geek title up <laughs> and then I've also got another one for for example my uh, buy me a coffee leak uh, leak <laughs> uh, link so if I put this one up here then this will pop up my uh, buy me a coffee link and this one when it comes up uh, beg your pardon there we go just took a little while to load so that is actually a, a dynamic link that is coming from a URL actually from buy me a coffee and so also if I was on a live stream uh, and somebody uh, went to this page and bought a coffee then it would pop up a little notification on the screen as well so that is quite handy for when you're doing your live streams also if you are uh, you know live streaming then there's lots of other uh, different sort of overlays and live things that you might want to have as well and that can all be done through here and you can activate them again on and off just simply at the touch of a button so I'll take that one down again now and the other thing that you can do with a stream deck is I showed you how you can simply add a button well what you can also do is since I'm sharing this uh, screen now I will go to uh, have a look at one of these other ones because this is the one that I use for my main title now although when I showed you me clicking on it in the side panel to bring up the uh, sort of the intro title if you like uh, what this one is is I've actually got this set as a multiple action because I want it to do a number of things in fact if I step back one step further to how I actually start these videos this one here that I have programmed to say uh, record uh, that's a three step action uh, four step action even and basically what that does is first of all it tells it to switch to a specific scene which is the sort of the opening scene um, then it has a bit of a delay so you can add a delay between actions uh, and then it starts to play the intro music that I have in the background and then it presses the go live button which if you're just recording is also the record button so when I press record it is actually triggering a, a number of different things and so when I press the button I know that I've got basically a second and then I start to do my intro and then as soon as I've finished my little intro and I want the titles to trigger I press the next button here and what this does is it just stops the music or actually runs the title scene but then has a slight delay and then stops the backing music that is in the uh, the very beginning part and so then that takes me into the main body of the video as I've said during the video I can do these little uh, pop-ups and things like that and then I've got my uh, zoom the top-down shot and this one but then we've also got a one for demo mode now demo mode doesn't have a uh, a isn't a scene as such so what I mean by demo mode is if I press this button here you can see that you're now seeing my entire screen uh, demo mode is actually control uh, D so I have this programmed to a uh, there we go actually shift command D I beg your pardon <laughs> so what that does is that press a shift command D now I've got that set up as a multiple action because what you find with the stream deck is if you're actually in another application and I press command shift D then let's say for example I was giving a uh, a demonstration of a piece of software something like that and so the piece of software in this case stream deck was the active piece of software uh, if I just press command shift D while I was in the active piece of software then it wouldn't activate the uh, uh, the demo mode in uh, Ecamm live and so what I've done is I've set that up as a multiple action and the first thing that the action does 
is it says open a program and the program is Ecamm Live. Now, obviously Ecamm Live is already open, but this has the effect of if the program is already open, it basically is just the same as kind of command tabbing to that program, just switching to that program. So by having this little action first, it means that when I uh, press on the button, it does actually just deactivate the uh, sharing as you've just seen me do there. Okay, so if I go back, another couple of uh, ones we've got in here is, I beg your pardon, the wrong screen. There we go. So below the, um, this one is the demo mode. We've also got the, uh, this one is for comments. So if I'm in a live stream, I can add comments to the, uh, to the screen that will pop up over the top. And then if I press this button, it'll just hide whichever comment is up on the screen at the time. I've also got the series of one to 10 because I do have a number of uh, sort of top fives, top tens, things like that lined up. And so these are basically just animations for, if I click on five, for example, it will be my sort of top five, top four, top three, whatever it is, happens to be. And I can use those to sort of uh, split up the video as I'm going through those lists, whatever they happen to be. So I'll just come back to the screen sharing again. And another reason for actually having a graphic like that instead of just saying next on the list is that it does make it easier if you are sort of scrubbing through. So I know when I've watched these sorts of things before, it's kind of nice to be able to just scroll through and see exactly where the next one is if they haven't actually put markers in their video, that is. Okay, so the other ones that we've got on here are, uh, I'll just come back to my sharing again. There is another one here called Hide UI, and that basically, when I'm looking at the window, pressing that just takes all of the peripheral uh, little switches and toggles off the edge of the preview. So normally you wouldn't actually be seeing this, but I would see it when I was uh, viewing the, um, uh, the screen. So I can click this little Hide UI button here. And then I've also got a Pause and Finish button. Now, I have actually got the finish tied into my end sequence, which you'll see at the end. But for that one, I just press this button, which is watch another video, because you'll see the animation that comes up is the sort of end screen where uh, I sign off and then they have the other videos that can be watched. watched and then that actually just ends the video from there as well. <clears throat> but we also have a pause and a finish button here. Uh, that I can use to sort of pause halfway through uh, and sometimes if it's not a thing with a, a, um, a specific end screen so for example like on a live stream I may just click the finish button here instead. Now these ones are the only two buttons that I can't actually change because they are the default buttons from uh, the Ecamm software and so they're the only ones where you don't actually get the opportunity to sort of change for the uh, two uh, different things. In fact I do beg your pardon, that's not quite right. <laughs> you can change the icons. However, the uh, the writing that is on them changes depending on what you're doing. So either this one now says finish. However, when before you go live, if you've got your Ecamm Live set to uh, record, then it will say record. And if you've got it set to go to a streaming platform, it will say uh, go live. Okay, the other two that I have on here at the top, these are just shortcuts for me to switch between desktops. So I have a number of desktops and I can switch between them if I'm showing different things. In fact, that's probably a good opportunity to show uh, this, which is my website. So if you go to my website, uh, takeonetech.io, you can find links to uh, videos, although obviously you'll have those from uh, YouTube, but then you can also find links to things like my podcast, my blog, and uh, gear where I list all of the gear that I'm using and generally anything that I've talked about on the channel really. So if you do want to go, if, if you do ever miss anything on a video and you can remember you saw it here but can't remember the video perhaps or exactly where it was, then you can probably find it by going to my website and just clicking on gear up there. Okay, so uh, that was another one. Now if I go back to here, we have got one other thing that I tend to use. Uh, which is these ones down here. And this is basically, I use uh, this one, this is called Pro Mouse. So if I click on this button, then it should load up my uh, Pro Mouse, which is this thing here. And it's just a little menu bar uh, app. And what this allows me to do is to highlight the screen. So if I'm using uh, this for demonstrating a piece of software or something like that, then it's a good idea for uh, being able to highlight things. The one next to it, so this is just this one here, 
Uh, this one, the magnifying glass, allows me to obviously magnify. So maybe I should have looked at that at the beginning to be able to show you all of these other different icons down here. And then the last one on the top here is this uh, one that looks like a spotlight, which is, as you may have guessed, a spotlight. So you can spotlight the screen. So these things all really help with um, uh, being able to demonstrate things on screen. And yeah, it's just a little app in the top of the menu bar there, Pro Mouse. I forget exactly how much it is. I don't think it's more than uh, $20, something like that, around about that price. Uh, it does actually have drawing features on it as well. So if I open the preferences of this, seeing as how we're here, <laughs> I might as well just show you as uh, so it's got some preferences uh, in terms of, you know, you can change the color of the sort of halo. You can change the level of zoom and things like that and the spotlight and the color of the background. And then it's got some drawing tools as well. And then there's a series of shortcuts. So you can, uh, if I just quickly activate it, you can do things like drawing on the screen. I don't actually have those um, shortcuts in my stream deck because I've got a Telestrator set up for drawing on the screen, but I'll save that one for another video because it's, uh, yeah, that's a whole another thing in itself. So if I just go back to my main view by pressing my uh, uh, stream deck there, and then I should actually get out of demo mode. So sorry if that's made some things a little bit hard to see there. Um, yeah, and so that is basically an overview of how I use the stream deck. It's a really solid piece of um, equipment. It feels really sturdy. Um, it's got a nice uh, sort of braided USB wire on the back as well. So it does certainly feel uh, very durable and has a nice sort of weight to it on the desk as well. It's got a sort of fairly uh, sort of rubberized bottom here as well. So it doesn't tend to stick around uh, to move around. You know, once it's on the desk, it's pretty solid and stays in place as well. Now, all of the icons that I've got there, I'm going to make available as a sort of a download for a template pack. I haven't got around to it yet. And what I want to do is, you know, these are actually all in my sort of uh, <laughs> website colors. So props not going to suit everybody. So what I thought was I could just make a sort of a few sets of them with uh, different uh, colors and things like that, and then make those available for downloads. I'm going to do a whole series specifically on the Stream Deck because I don't just use it for... Um, for uh, this, I use it also for things like Excel. So for example, I've got a whole load of Excel uh, keys and macros programmed in there, and I use it for all sorts of other things. I've uh, even been <laughs> gone to the extent of making myself a desktop calculator as well. So <laughs> I'll perhaps do a little video on that. That's probably a bit of a, uh, one of those things that's a uh, bit of a waste of time or a time sink, but uh, I've got that linked into the calculator on the desktop. So sometimes it's nice to have a big clunky desktop calculator isn't it so it just links in with the mac calculator and yeah there's no end of uses for the stream deck and so that is going to be another focus of this channel is how i'm using it for lots of different applications and then obviously i'll share all of the the sort of icon packs and things like that that go with them if you fancy making those yourself so I need to just get back to my uh ecamm live menu and then yeah, that's about it for how I'm using this with my uh, Ecamm Live and how I do all of the production from start to finish using the, uh, the Stream Deck. And that allows me to do it in one take and get a 30 minute video done in 30 minutes rather than faffing about for two and a half hours and then having to spend another few hours editing it. Because like I say, this is uh, not my main drive at the moment and so it's just a case of trying to fit these in in the uh, in the morning or in the afternoon so that's all for now with that i shall press my outro uh, button here and we'll go over to the last scene and thanks for watching i hope you found this useful i'll see you in another video check one of those out up in the top corner <laughs>